Hello again everyone, Brett back, Altitude Scale Modeling, part 4 of the Airfix 172nd B-17G Bomber and Bomber Supply Set Build and Diorama Series. Right now I'm working on some bombs. I want to show you real quick. You, know, you, you put bomb halves together, you got seam lines. You can sand them with these wonderful sanders right here which work but what I like to do I find where I put my tool all right where did I hide the tool see what happens you come in not prepared I'm gonna lift this up ah there it is all right these Alex scrapers you can see they got different shapes in them. There's three different ones. This one for more flat and angled surfaces. And this one for getting inside of things and flat surfaces. And this one for round surfaces. So what I like to do, I find where it's going to scrape, but not scrape the side so it's too small. That one would be just right. You can see where it's getting in there, and then I just scrape away the seam line. Roll it over, do the other side. Scrape away the seam line. Seam line no more. Quick, simple, then if you need to, you come along with your sander because your sander conforms to the curve of it. Because it's a sponge. And if you need to, you just rub a little sanding on it out. But the seam line stuff's gone. With the sander, you just smoothen it out. A couple of quick tips. I got this from, or my set from Hobby Easy a couple of years ago in Japan. I think e model sells them. And I know, um, one of the hobby stores in the UK that just went out of business sold them too. I can't remember what they're called. Because they went out of business. Hmm. Anyway, if you can get the Alex scrapers, it's A-L-E-C. They work wonders on seam lines for fuselages and everything. So, we're going to paint up some bombs real quick. That'll be all the airbrushing today, maybe. We're still working on fuselage halves. The bombs were olive drab. I'm trying some uh, life color. Neat. Put some on the edge here. Gotta clean it up or else my lid's gonna stick. But this is life color olive drab camouflage series. Straight olive drab. Alright. Neat seems to be working okay. Nice acrylic paint. I'm putting them all into this holder off camera. I don't know why it's off camera. Got a bunch of bombs here. I'm thinking they're 250 and 500. Sometimes I like to blow the 
make sure there's no crud on them. This is the one we did with the Alex Creeper not too long ago. See no seam lines on it at all. Once I dry, I go back and get the part where the, the uh, tweezers are holding it in. Oops, then I get paint on my hand and ruin a perfectly good paint job. And I got paint on my hand. I should pay attention. Just another one of those live oopses. Let's see what we got here. I have to drop some of these off because I've only got so many of these tweezers. I'm going to make sure they're relatively dry before I drop them off because I don't want to screw up the paint job. I'm below between uh, 10 and 15 pounds of air pressure. Let's see, this one's been in here a little bit. Oh no! Bombs away! Unfortunately, that was dry too. Got two more to go. These are all the bombs that came with the kit. Two large ones and eight small ones. As I said, I'm thinking they're 500 and 250, and I'm sure it says in the instructions what size they are. Actually, I haven't looked yet. And life color does dry very quickly, as you can tell by me handling it. I wouldn't want to do too much because I'm sure it's just an uh, eggshell effect over drying. That's why I'm just lightly holding on come by here get the points where the tweezers were holding and make sure we get inside the fins and the nose is done that one's still wet, this one's okay fingerprints in them. That's all good. Let's blow this and dry a little bit. Hope everybody's been doing well. All right, I'm going to clean up the paint booth, move the bombs to the side, and then I'll come right back. All 
All right, we are back. The paint I used for the bombs was from this U.S. Olive Drab set from Life Color. They do a lot of really nice sets. I think I've got three, six, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen of their paint sets. Uniforms, weathered wood, dust and rust is a great one. German and U.S. uniforms, rust wizard, flesh paint. Read that one from here. Middle East British vehicle camouflage. I got quite a few and they all seem to work very well. So, where we left off? Where were we last? Well, we got PE in here. And there's a whole bunch more needs to go in. And we got PE in here. Oops. And see, there's more going in. And we've got the front of the cockpit done. The seats aren't installed yet. And we've got the racks to the bomb bays done. And we've got this bulkhead done. And we've got this bulkhead started. But obviously needs more touch-up paint. So, I want to get into a little bit of weathering inside. Now, someone on the live chat said U.S. bombers weren't green zinc chromate. I found some pictures, if I remember, I'm going to put them up that show where I got my ideas for this color on an actual B-17. So, hopefully that will address any issues and besides, it is my model. I can make it any color I want. Hold on a second while I find my... I'm going to use Tamiya's panel line wash. I can remember what I did with it. Please hold. Alright, I found them. I've got panel line X and color dark brown. And panel annex, oh, that's surface primer. Grabbed the wrong one. Panel annex and color gray. I'm gonna try a little both, see which looks better. So, obviously, this bomber's been in use and it's not gonna be all pristine and neat inside. And before I put any more of the PE panels and guns and everything, I'm going to get this all weathered up. So I'm going to do side by side. One brown. Oops, sorry. One brown. One gray. I've actually had these for a couple years. I bought them when they first came out from Japan. I buy lots of my stuff direct from Japan. So I can get it early. better because you almost can't see the gray and black will be a little too dark because there's a black color. Take a little q-tip. Clean both of them up. So the gray's not too bad, but I think the brown matches up better. So what I want to do is just dirty up all these panels. We'll do some chipping and stuff later. And once it dries, because you can see it's pretty brown, but once it dries, it's not going to be that brown. More of the green will show through. 
but it will look worn and dirty. And I just want to get all these ridged areas. I'm not going to do it in this area because I'm going to have to go over it with some green to cover up that photo -like panel I put in. So I'll go back later after I paint that. A little weather in there. Definitely up here because you will see some of the windows and you see how nice it flows. It's just basically an enamel wash. It's over acrylic paint so it shouldn't cause a problem. I'm trying to keep it out of the windows. How quickly that ran. Definitely got a little too much on that one. So go back in with my little brush right here that's now empty. And use this as the pot to fill it up with. Clean up all the excess and use it for the next area. Pretty ingenious of the way chemistry works and physics works. Get all the excess out. Use it again. Capillary action or capillary action depending on where you are in the world. You can see it working really nice. I'm doing this before I get any of the side windows in because I don't want to get it on the windows. Again, I'm going to skip over this part because it's going to have to get touched up with paint on that new photo etch bulkhead I put in. Again, a little too much there, so let's just soak it up and move it down. And this is another taste thing, how dirty or clean you want the inside of your aircraft. And how much is actually going to be seen, which isn't going to be a lot. But, I'll know it's there. That's part of modeling, isn't it? We know it's there. Soak this up a little more, move it over here. Okay. Weathered up nicely when it dries, it'll dull down. Nice, good, clear weathering coat. Bring out some highlights. Also, need to dirty up these bomb racks. We're going to be assembling these as soon as the bombs are dry. I'm going to have the bomb bay open, but you're not going to see much of it unless I put a mirror under it. Not too much there. That over to this one. And I got a little stray hair, which would look like a gigantic hair in scale. Again, still too much on here. It's clogging up the holes. So you can take your little Q-tip, soak it right up. Whatever soaks up, you can move around. <laughs> I 
All right, I did this one first. You can see how if you compare, because I didn't go over these again, the gray and the brown. I know the, this one's already dry, this one's still wet. Now if you do put too much down, you can always go in with some, uh, find my bottle here somewhere, of odorless mineral spirits. Sometimes you ever think you just have too much stuff. <sighs> Definitely not that, that's extreme pain. That'll kill everything. Ah, white spirit. <sighs> white spirit for enamel products. Put a little on there. Roll away the excess. You can just go in here. Get rid of it. If you don't like it. Get rid of it. Tone it down. The beauty of painting it over acrylics, it shouldn't affect the layer below. I'm going to touch up this gray area with some brown because it just looks odd. And because I got enamel thinners on there, it ran really nice. If you put your enamel thinners or your odorless white spirit down first and then put your enamel thin or your uh, panel wash on it or your enamel wash on it it'll flow really nicely and it won't stick as well and you can go through and touch this up however whether you want it to be I want mine to be really dirty inside because bombing the enemy was a dirty job So, insides of both those are weathered. It's got a little too much on it still. And you can tell when it's too much because it's really, really glossy and pooled. You've got too much down. I didn't get on the windows. You can see I cleaned the masking off the windows. I still gotta go in there and touch it up because you can see it's ragged and crooked. It's one thing about using liquid mask, you don't get as clean of a line. But I'll go in there and clean it all up the rest of the way. I was test fitting this the other day before I got anything into it, just to make sure the fit was good. Empty. It's got, you know, it's going to need a little touch up there. But once that's together, that's a beautiful seam line across the top. A really nice seam line. This one here might be iffy up front. You see, it just doesn't quite want to go together and it's empty. The tail, goes together very nicely. But you see by dry fitting it now, I know where the problem areas are going to be once I get parts inside because that could cause a whole separate issue. So it looks like just the front's going to be an issue. All right. Instruction wise, we've got this pretty much all done. That's this here put on. Oh no, one of my wheels fell off. Fixing that in a minute. Bomb racks are together, bombs are together. Now I just need to put the bombs on the racks. It's like the two big bombs go on here.
on these racks and the small bombs. Some of them just have pins here and some of them have actual connecting points. Oh, sorry. These have just pins on the top of them. And these have like connecting lugs. Which... Have the bombs sit in there like that. Now these bombs aren't quite dry enough to be gluing them into the bomb rack yet without messing up the paintwork. Plus these just got an enamel wash put on them. So we're going to let those sit. Then you know, we're going to put the bomb bay in, the back bulkhead, put the front bulkhead on, put on some more attachments, which is photo etch part, it's floors. All that in there. Ball turret. This is gonna have to be masked up. Wings. All right. Where we are currently on photo etch is the rear of the interior. So, move my little PE pliers out of the way. This part is this part. Just got to touch up the interior green. I haven't cut off this bulkhead and started on those yet. But I have done this part. It's right here. Now remember when it comes to photo etch, you don't have to use every single bit. There's going to be parts like on here. I've got um, resin guns, so I probably won't use these. And these are the, uh, crap, what are they called? Part that goes over the barrel. Flash protectors. I may roll them over and put them over the resin guns, depending on how well the resin guns look, but I'm not using these legs. I'm not using these parts, because they're not going to be seen. And these parts here go to... Here, and then you got to cut out these discs, three millimeter by five millimeter plastic discs to put on there. I'm going to wait and see if they're going to be seen before I try it because that seems pretty tedious to me. And I wanted some good highlighting photo etch like this stuff here. I didn't really want every single tiny bit of pee. But there, a lot of this will be going on, which is what I'm going to work on today. So, let's bring the box over and show you where we stand. You can see this is still all interior parts. These are engine parts, the props, the wings. Here are the resin guns, and here's some more PE for the engines and the exterior. And I got the landing flaps, I'm going to give them a shot, but I'm not sure yet, it seems like a lot. These are the kit decals which I won't be using. These are the Warbird decals, which I will be using. Plus I have a sheet of stencils. So you can see, we got us a long way to go. Unfortunately, we're not in a rush. Sorry about that, dropped a piece on the floor. I was going to buy the resin wheels. But these are flat spotted nicely, and I think they'll go together okay. As a matter of fact, while we're sitting here waiting for some of this weathering to dry, let me show these fancy new cutters I got. 
These are new side cutters. And only one side moves. One side's stable. Only one side has a blade, one side's flat. And cutting through things, it's like a knife through butter. It's so smooth. So you can't even hear it clicking together. And it's supposed to be a two stage where you cut farther away and then cut in closer. But I found it works just as well this way. And it makes a very nice close cut. And as many of you know, I've been using my loving my Tamiya cutters. These are for cuts like this, replacing my Tamiya cutters. And I'll show you why. My Tamiya cutters, you see the blade, the tip? They're starting to wear, and you can actually see when you put them together, you can see through where it's bent the cutting surface. So while they survived for a while, Tammy is probably going away, and I'm going back to my Zurons for big things, because these have survived for years, literally years, and have no problem. So for the bigger sprue cuts, I'll be using my good old-fashioned Zurons again. Tamiya cost a lot of money and the blades are not holding up. These cost a lot of money and we'll see how well they hold up. It's D-S-P-I-A-E. Craft Tools. Don't ask me to say it because I don't know the proper pronunciation. Alright, back to wheels. You can see how nice a cut that made all the way around. Oops. Put them together. Need to do a little that won't work. That won't work. That'll work. Make sure you've got a flat part inside. And this one, because it has no tabs, I can use a bigger one. Make sure it's flat. There we go. Nice perfect fit. Use my plastic magic here. Fill up those two little holes. My plastic magic doesn't evaporate as quickly as my Tamiya. Spot to flat spot. There we go. Looking good. Gonna do use a little clean up. Actually, for that one, I will use this because it's keep my curve intact. Alright, what I do? I 
Uh, all right. So that's what build series you can film all your mistakes. There we go. That's better. I think once they're primered again, and then painted tire black or rubber black, whichever I use. You're going to see the seam. Fits together nicely. So I think not investing in resin wheels at this time makes good sense. Now you notice I'm not rushing through this build. Doing it in segments. Hopefully I'm not overwhelming you guys with once a week videos. And for those of you looking at my sanders, yes, I'm using Flory and UMP sanders. I use what I consider the best tool I can find. And they have different uses, as you can tell by the fact that I was using the sponging one for more curved areas and the flatter thinner ones for the flat areas we don't have to get in a war over loyalties I have friends who make these sanders and I will always support them because they're quality products, no matter what some people say. I've had these for a long time before these came out, and I'm just not going to throw them away because these came out. Because these are good quality sanders as well. So, I support people trying to make a living in this business. And I support my friends. And they know that because the amount of money I spend at their shop. Alright. So we might need to go through and rescribe some tread pattern in here once we get it primed. Oh! It's because I pulled it apart once and didn't re-glue it. You don't have it lined up right. See, I don't have it lined up right. You know why? Because the holes are different sizes, so you don't do what I just did. Wow. Aren't you glad you're watching this so you can learn from my mistakes? Anyway, these wheels, no need for resin wheels. These look great. Once they're primer painted and if you need to go back in and rescribe some of the tread work, you'll be just fine. So. That takes care of the wheels. Now, you 
see how, and it, it's good because you can see the difference where I didn't do it and where I did. Nice worn highlights are there. The details in there. You know, they climbed from a dirty field into an aircraft. And I doubt they dusted and vacuumed it when they were done. Okay. Let's check these bombs here. Yeah, seem pretty well dry. So, that one's like that. So, there, this is only only using four. All right, we'll only use four. We won't even use those big ones. Those big ones will go on the bomb cart. So the four we want, one, two, three. There are four with the tabs, and there are eight with the Pins. Those are obviously for the bomb rack, bomb cart. So you want the bomb, second one up, second notch up. Facing. In there like that, so stick with the plastic magic. Bomb one in there. Plastic magic. in there. I'll make sure they're straight. Don't have to pull them out. Put them back in later. Two of these are going on the lower section according to the instructions. Here. So that would be this one. And this bomb's going on there. Second peg up. Oops. Again, making sure it's straight. Level. Okay. 
And with this one, second peg up. Just fit in there nicely. Make sure it's straight. 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 Now remember bombs were not exactly the cleanest thing. Plus they were cast, so a little texture on the bombs is a good thing too. Alright. Bomb racks done. Bombs attached. Now they are gonna fit into this long bulkhead. I'm trying to figure out where the PE detail is going to go. Get that bulkhead over here. To speak for itself. Uh, it's hiding over here. Sneaky little bulkhead. Okay, the bomb rack's attached to this side, the PE attaches to this side, and it's some PE I'm going to want to use because it's a door, so if I put the bomb racks on, This one slots in here, and then this one slots in here, and this one slots in here, and then this bulkhead goes on the front, it'll sit like that. Hey, so I think that'll be better. We're doing the PE, so we're going to do that. We're going to put this whole thing together, then we're going to PE the rest. Let's start with the side. And then the middle. And then the other side. Now, if I put those bombs on right, this will fit right. If I didn't put the bombs on right, this won't fit right. And I'll have to take the bombs off and start all over again. So. Push those in. Put one in at a time. Using the utmost patience you could possibly have. So while you work, that one drop down a little bit. Remember, patience. This isn't to see how fast we can get a B-17 built in 70 second scale. And 
that work? Okay, I think the bombs are in right. The sides are in right. So what I'm gonna do, move that one from that side. And oops. Took it right back out. straight, we're glued, we got our holes, the tabs made it into the holes, and on this side, the tabs are in the holes, there we go, so if you follow directions right, I know that bomb looks a little crooked in there. But everything's lined up. Everything's square. We are going to let this glue dry. So we don't screw up the bomb bay. So that's how you did it. Patience. Let the glue sit a little bit when you do the back. All the PE, as you can see, is going to go on this side, which now we can do easily once this dries. The angle of the spurs matches, because these are going to be the main wing supports. And I'm thinking... From all angles, it looks right. Oh, one side seems a little heavier than the other. Or it's just crooked. Let's see. same point on the sides touching pushing in all right we're gonna let this dry we're gonna stop for now pretty long video as it is thanks for watching it's the end of part four I'm gonna do the this PE during the week so when I come back next week the rest of the PE will be put on I'll probably spray it spray whatever I put in here that needs sprayed because you've already seen me spray that I've already got a primer so thanks for watching give you a little close-up of the Bombay here all set and ready to go thanks for watching oops moved the camera a little too much hope I didn't make you dizzy have a good week. Thanks for watching. Get working on your builds. Bye-bye.